Thanks, Roman and team. Next. We have the using Triton IR for high performance fusions in the XLA by George. Just going to open the presentation. Hey all, I'm George. I work on the XLA compiler. Uh, so XLA is a compiler developed in Google which accepts inputs from multiple machine learning frameworks. It works with PyTorch, it works with Jax, it works with TensorFlow. It applies a set of optimizations and then it has a set of backends it can cogen to. So it can cogen to NVIDIA or AMD GPUs, it can cogen to Intel or ARM CPUs and of course to Google's own TPU hardware. XLA is a fairly complicated compiler with different levels of optimization inside, but for this talk, I'll just talk about the fusion optimization and the cogen we do afterwards, specifically for the GPU backend. So basically inside the fusion, we group different instructions we get inside groups. Each group is cogen to a single CUDA kernel. And then out of such fusions, we either cogen them directly, but for this talk I'll talk about the section where we use uh, Triton to generate them to PTX, which we can then run. And I would guess most of the people in this room know what GPU fusion is, but just for the sake of completeness, uh, that many data movement workflows on GPUs become throughput bound a lot earlier they, than they become compute bound. So in this case, for a simple example where if you have two element-wise kernels, one multiplies by a constant, one adds two vectors. If you run them one after another, you have to waste a lot of throughput by first writing down the intermediate result and then by reading it. So you can save it all by instead effectively fusing the loops and doing it all in one kernel. So then uh, if you keep doing such fusions in a fashion until you become compute bound, like the separations even become free because uh, throughput is not increased, Therefore, one of the operations doesn't really cost anything. And that's roughly how it looks inside the XLA compiler. So each box is an instruction. Uh, the instructions are fairly simple. Like I guess Matmal and Convolution are like two exceptions just because they're so ubiquitous in machine learning workflows. So they're also instructions. But most of the instructions are simple. Um, like either element-wise operations like addition of subtraction or data movement like reshape or transpose. And then the goal of the fusion pass is to group such a graph of instructions into these boxes called fusions. Then like one fusion goes to a CUDA kernel and inside the fusion only the fusion boundary is materialized inside the GPU memory. infinitely so at some point we either hit the compute bound or we hit the limit of number of registers so we run out of shared memory so all of this needs to be taken into account while deciding how to grow such fusion clusters and the rough idea of how xla uh, builds up such fusion clusters is this we identify like so-called here operations which kind of defines a cogen on the whole kernel Usually it's something compute intensive or like complicated like a matmal where we do know the tiled cogen recipe for a fast performance matmals. And then the matmal here operation effectively dictates the tiling and then we fuse stuff into that matmal as long as the fuse operations which are black dots in this example are tiling compatible with a red dot. And then for the cogent part, describing in this talk, 
for such a fusion operation, we then convert from a set of HLO instructions to the Triton IR. And I'll try to explain the algorithm to the best of my ability of uh, how such a conversion is performed. Uh, so first task we need to do, uh, which we also need to do during fusion, not just cogen, is to figure out um, the mapping between the dimensions of the hero instruction of the fusion. So let's say the matmal and all the intermediate instructions, because uh, at the end it's the hero instruction which determines uh, the overall tiling and everything inside the fusion has to be tiling compatible. So we need to figure out that uh, tiling can be do it by backwards propagating it through the graph. I'll show an example on the next slide. And then once we do have such a mapping, we can actually do the actual code operation, which is converting from HLO instructions into Triton IR. Uh, right, so there is another slide. So for how does the mapping actually look like? Uh, the mapping is quite simple. The mapping from the uh, for each instruction from the instruction dimensions into the hero instruction dimensions. It's simply a vector of integer pairs where the first element is a tile dimension which says like which dimension of the hero instruction the current element is mapping to and the second one is count and the count is simply used together with the position inside this vector to determine uh, which dimension of the current instruction is mapping into. And we need to have count because a single dimension can be mapped into multiple dimensions of the here instruction. So for example, if you have a shape of 38 um, by 64, and let's say our here instruction has three tile dimensions, uh, then a possible dimension order could be mapping, could be effectively splitting the first um, dimension into two. So we split 38 into, we factorize it into 19 and two, where 19 is mapped to um, dimension number zero of the here instruction, two is mapped to dimension number one, and 64 is mapped to dimension number two. Uh, so this is all easier to show with an example. So that's a kind of a math malfusion we code gen, and we have this HLO fusion where we start with a parameter on left hand side. We convert the data type. We perform a transposition. Then we do a reshape and then we do a metmal with the right hand side. Uh, follow up by an epilogue fusion. And then let's uh, walk through how the mapping is actually propagated. So for the dot instruction input, we have um, 18 by 15,000 uh, left hand side dimension, right? So that's what you get after the reshape. So the reshape effectively splits that uh, dimension into multiple. So here your uh, part, which is 0, 18, stays the same, but the mapping from uh, of the 15,000 is split. So now it has three elements, which when multiplied together are 15,000, and they all map to the uh, first dimension of the here instruction. And the here instruction is a dot in this case. And then the transpose uh, flips the first and second element, while convert leaves it unaffected. And here the, on the slide, it's the output of the instruction which is written after the instruction. That's why the effect of the transpose is written after the convert. And then we perform the same operation propagating this mapping forward. If you want to code and the uh, suffix of the fusion, so it's effectively the same idea. We start with uh, dimension 0, 15,000, dimension 142. And then after the reshape, the dimension 0 is split into multiple and the transpose transposes the first two dimensions, uh, which is then each vector is associated to the instruction which we will use for cogen. And see, such a mapping is not always possible. Uh, in order to be able to propagate it, it needs to be entirely incompatible, which we need in order to be able to guarantee that we can actually co-generate coalesced 
loads and stores. So for instance, we uh, would just cut the fusion and say like it's impossible to keep fusing there. And if the dimensions would have a common factor, we would factorize it first and then treat it as a transpose. And another complication when propagating this dimension mappings is a case of merging paths. And if you have a DAC, uh, there are two possible cases. Either the dimension mapping matches on left hand side and right hand side then you can just cogen the top element of the diamond once and reuse it, or the mapping doesn't match. In this case, we have an option of either to cut the fusion or to duplicate it and say like we'll cogen it with both stylings once because it could be still more efficient than uh, cutting the fusion. So then let's look how do we get to the Triton IR from HLO using this dimension mapping. So in this case, for the parameter, we generate a single Triton load instruction, and then in our case, five becomes the batch dimension, and the final dimension mapping we arrived would have a, a block pointer in Triton, which the API doesn't look exactly like on the slide, but I'm simplifying for uh, the sake of space where the first dimension has um, size 18, size 3000, and the second dimension has size 3000. Then the convert is just um, converted to the convert instruction, Triton IR. The transpose reshape become knobs because they effectively already accounted for in the dimension transformation for the load instruction. And then the, for the dot instruction, we effectively apply the kernel template. So it's because it's uh, here instruction which determines um, the fusion structure and we've started with the goal that we know how to code in the methmal so we apply the methmal recipe and it effectively uh, determines how what kernel we generates and then finally for the fusion route we would generate a triton the store instruction after we perform uh, the code generation, we still need to fix the tiling and decide whether we want to apply split K. So here we proceed the same way, uh, just normal Triton kernel proceeds. So we do some audit tuning to find a good tiling size. Uh, and for split K, we need to sometimes um, add an extra reduction instructions if split K is beneficial for the metmal. And then the second fusion pass may group such uh, reduction instructions together. And by applying such uh, technique, we can generate fairly complicated uh, methmal fusions as shown in the slide with uh, many complicated instructions and broadcasts and everything uh, in both fusion prologue and epilogue. And while doing this work, we mostly focused on internal benchmarks. So I can't really show many open source comparisons yet, uh, but basically for an internal benchmark, mainly by doing Triton fusions, we could cut the performance by more than 4x, just because before we were mostly relying on the Kublas call. And for small matrices, then data movement operations can become very expensive. And of course, there is a whole lot of future work to make it even more performant. Uh, so for the fusion, we want to develop the cost model further to figure out when it's cheaper to duplicate and when it's cheaper to cut the fusions. For the audit tuning, we are not fully satisfied with um, the need to just try to coach on many different tilings and then run them. We do want to try to figure out some kind of a decision model. We've tried multiple approaches so far, but the accuracy wasn't great. And then for the Trident itself, we did find that once the fusions become complicated, uh, sometimes it falls off the beaten track and goes into a performance cliff where, for instance, the pipeline stops working and the performance isn't great. OK, so that's the GitHub URL to the OpenXLA compiler. So if you're interested, you could play with it or uh, contribute to the compiler. Thanks.
are there any questions? Uh, have you tested the like map model fusion performance of Hopper yet? And are there like any interesting things there? Uh, have you tested the map meld performance uh, with fusions on Hopper GPUs yet? And are there any like interesting changes in the like performance of things and like difficulties there uh, or like integrated it with mm -hmm. any of the new Triton Hopper stuff? Like so far, it seems a Hopper affects mostly like the recipe for the map meld itself much more than the fusion properties. So, so far, like switching to Hopper did give us a large boost, but when we compare it to what you can do in Catalyst is still lagging behind. So like overall, we are quite happy with this approach on Hopper, but it does seem that we are leaving a, a, a lot of performance on the table by, but I think it's like mostly on the Triton level abstraction. So then like Triton would need to utilize um, more specific yeah, on the like one thing driver. I was thinking of was the like block pointers. Uh, like, do you have block pointers? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah for we switched to yeah. block pointers. Like at this uh, level of modeling, block pointers actually provides a much better abstraction levels and like arbitrary loads and stores. In fact, it actually made the code faster because with um, loads and stores, we did spend quite a bit of compute on um, the pointer arithmetic. Nice. Thanks. So if you have some uh, custom kernels, like kernels that just written using Triton IR, uh, is it possible to integrate those into this uh, compiler stack? Um, it's conceptually possible. Some people looked into it. It's not done yet. So currently, like let's say if you're using JAX and like JAX Triton allows you to write such uh, kernels by themselves. I think in spite of just about the same, like inside the compiler, it will be just seen as an opaque blob which gets transferred around without much changes. But at the same time, people did try to see that like high in general doesn't seem like the right abstraction level for fusion, but then on the other, on the other hand, like if you see a Triton kernel followed by an element wise operation or followed by like something simple, it doesn't seem like there is a fundamental reason why you can't fuse it. So I think for simple things we should be able to, uh, but it hasn't really been done yet. Yeah, I thought the cost model idea like for fusions and tiling was interesting. So like what are some of the things that would a cost model for tiling would have to take into account? And like have you guys made any progress on that? So for things that are two questions there, like one is there is a cost model which we applied during fusion. So when we do fusion, we do not concretize the tiling. We just check if the dimensions are compatible. So during fusion, we mostly check that whether you run into compute bound yet or whether you can like fuse for free and whether duplicating makes sense. Then for the tiling, like figuring out tiling, what we tried is to do a decision first and then like try to predict the best tiling for a MATMAL using a decision for it. itself and then like the input to the decision model kind of becomes impractical. But then even for a simple math model, the accuracy wasn't really great. Like I think we needed to pick like top 20 or something um, tilings before it became competitive with like exhaustive for the tuning. Or I think our hope, I don't think we even hope to like have a model to just produce an optimal tiling anymore. Uh, we are mostly hoping to like just filter out tilings which are horrible because exhaustive auto tuning isn't that expensive actually. Like you can exhaustive auto tune with simple heuristics like a lot of things. So just if we um, use some decision model to cut really bad things, like it's already a very large performance boost. Any other questions? We probably have time for one more. Okay, if not, thanks, George.